Hi, welcome back to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm John R. and I'm your instructor. How do we change a simple piece of copper into something interesting and kind of sexy? Well, I'm going to show you. It's called form folding. And today we're going to do a few experiments with this particular process, which may not result in an actual wearable, but may result in some interesting shapes that you can cannibalize to create other items. So let's get started. First thing that you want to do is you want to fold your piece of copper in half. And the best way to do that is to drop it into a vise. Now, some vices have teeth on them and you may need to put tape or some other material over that so that you don't mar the surface of, of the copper. Now, this is a pre-annealed piece of copper, which means that it's been softened with heat. So it's going to be very, very easy to fold, in spite of the fact that it's a 22 gauge thickness. So, I have it in the vise. I'm just going to use my thumbs. And look at that. It wants to bend right over it. So, I'll take it out of the vise and I'll continue to push the metal over. Again, I can just use my thumbs, and now it's folded over, but if I want to tighten this seam, I can use a rawhide mallet or a rubber mallet. There. It's as simple as that. Once you've folded the material in half, you want to draw a half circle or a portion of a half circle onto your metal. Use an indelible ink pen, and I would use one of a dark color so that you have a high contrast. And you're just basically going to draw a very low, rounded curve from one end to the other, just like that. Once you've got your half circle drawn, you need to cut it out. And the easiest way would be with a pair of shears. Now, they could be any shape. I just happen to have these with me today. And um, if you don't have shears, you could use like a really heavy duty pair of scissors. You just want to cut this out, like so. Follow the curve all the way around. Now, be sure to get rid of these pieces, put them in your scrap bin so that you don't cut yourself on them, and put your shears away and lock them away. So you can see right now I have a rounded edge and, uh, that's opposite a folded edge. So the next thing that we need to do is to hammer. Now, this is a good time to mention safety. Put on your safety glasses. Hammers can shatter, things can get underneath the hammer and shoot into your eye. And if you haven't watched our safety video yet, now's a really good time to look at that. All right, so we're safe, we're ready to move on. Now what we want to do is we want to work on a striking surface. So here I brought up a bench block. Now sometimes your anvil might actually have a striking surface on it as well. But this one's a little bit broader and cleaner than this one, so I'm going to work here. We also want to use a cross peen hammer. Now, a cross peen hammer could be any size. In this case, we're looking at a goldsmith's hammer. And we're interested in this end of the hammer that has a straight edge to it. Now, this is special because it is the only hammer shape that will allow you to control the direction of the movement of the metal. In this case, it'll either move metal this way or this way. All other hammers, when you strike with them, they just compress the metal and send it out in all directions, exactly like when you step on a bug. You swish it and it goes all out. Okay, so this gives you a high degree of control. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put this on our striking surface, and I'm going to start in the center and work to one side and then work to the other.
at the other side. Okay, so you can see what I've accomplished is I left the folded edge just like it was. I did not strike that edge. And I hit along the cut edge, leaving this kind of a pie crust sort of look. Now if I flip it over, you'll notice that it's not really evident on the other side. If you wanted something that had that texture on both sides, you can hit both sides. It's not important. But in order to be able to manipulate this to open it up, I'm going to have to anneal it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this on an annealing block and I'm going to use a simple torch. You can get this at any hardware store. As an automatic striker, you just need heat. So let me go ahead and anneal this right now. So after this comes out of the quench quenching bowl, we're just going to dry it off. And you can see, heating the metal turns it dark. It oxidizes. And some of the oxidation is red. The other part of the oxidation is black. Now there's a way to manipulate this so that you can end up with just red oxidation. But you can see it also does this type of color staining. This type of color staining can be reapplied to a pickled or cleaned piece of metal using a heat gun. If you want to preserve this, you need to put either an E-coating or some kind of a lacquer finish over it. Otherwise, the copper is just going to eventually turn brown like a penny. Okay, so once you have it annealed, you can open it up. And that's really easy to do. I'm just going to use a pair of pliers and I'll just wedge the pliers in between the two layers and begin to open them. It's kind of exciting because it's kind of a treat to see what's inside. Alright, so now that I have this open, I'll peel it back a little bit more to expose what the inside looks like. Now, I can do it any way I want to. I'm going to push it against the table here so I can get it really wide open for you. There we go. So in this case, we ended up with something that looks like an autumn leaf. Now, you can do other things. Now, I've previously heated up and worked with these two other items. Now, in this case, I've hit repeatedly along the cut edge in order to try to create a Ruger fold. This could eventually turn into a spiral bead. And in this case, I hit along the folded edge rather than the cut edge. And this one will turn into like a little bow. Let's open them up and see what we get. So again, I'm going to take my pliers, and I'm going to push inside, and I'm going to start to open them up. Again, it's like opening up presents at Christmas, because you get to see what they look like and what's inside. So you can see this one, it looks almost like a little canoe and the interior is still bright and shiny, unlike the exterior, which is oxidized. Now, this may turn into, say, a neck piece that you might hang things from, or you might cut it apart and make some other items. Let's open this one. Now, this one has been struck on the hitting surface multiple times in order to get it to start to curve around on itself. So I'm just going to lightly open it up, and I should mention, this one I actually cleaned the exterior of the piece in a pickle pot, which is basically a mild acid bath that we use to clean metal. Alright, so let's get this open all the way around. It's exciting. Okay, so this one, I can begin to peel it apart. 
and I can already tell that I have a beautiful layer of oxidation in the center of this piece. And because it's nicely annealed, the piece already wants to give me some really good movement. Now, like I said, you know, you don't have to necessarily use these pieces as the finished component. You could cut them apart and use just segments of them in, your, in another piece that you create. Okay, so this one's a little bit more open. I could be a little bit playful with it. I could ruffle the edges just by manipulating it with my fingers. See that right there? Just a little bit of variation. And you can see how this one will allow me to torque the material. And if I were to have hit it further and struck it more and more and more, I would have been able to compress this better and make it more into a bead form. Right now, it just wants to be rather sculptural. But again, this could be very, very exciting. It could make a terrific earring, especially if you do it in a smaller scale. Let's bring out our original one again. So you can see we can get a variety of interesting shapes and colors using a very simple technique. I hope you enjoy working with the fold forming technique and check out our other videos and our other products that are available on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.